Two videos ago, I made a video of myself reacting to the fifth Indiana Jones movie trailer. There was a reason for that. I love these movies. As a kid, I would watch those movies and recreate those scenes. It was a lot of fun. And if you don't already know, I'm a movie maker. Movie? I make movies. Evil. I love to make movies. These Indiana Jones movies inspired me to go on this path. Create and entertain. My Detective Jones movies were clearly an inspiration from the Indiana Jones movies and movies from the 80s in general. But yeah, these movies have always been special to me. I have never ever seen these movies on the big screen until now with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Obviously the most anticipated movie of the year for me. Can shred this film to pieces, but hey, listen. I enjoyed watching Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, so it doesn't matter to me. Watching a new Indiana Jones movie starring Harrison Ford on the big screen is something I never thought would happen until now. Your boy is way too excited for this movie. Because this franchise really means a lot to me and millions of people. Let's get it. Excuse the red. I, I am wearing a lot of red, but that is not the point. Today is uh, August, Jesus. Today is June 28, 2023. Tomorrow, Indiana Jones will be released. It is seven o'clock right now. We bought tickets for the seven o'clock showing for tomorrow. So in less than 24 hours, I'll be watching this movie. Thoughts before I go into this movie, um, the dial, is supposed to be a time traveling device so there is rumors that the movie will involve indiana jones time traveling to the earlier movies i really do hope that's not the case but you know i'll be you know what it's fine it's goofy but me and my parents have actually been re-watching the other indiana jones movies and literally all of them except last crusade has really goofy powers for the artifacts you know they're the arc shoots lasers at people and kills them the the stone in temple of dune still doesn't really make sense to me like it just has magical powers the holy grail is the only one that is believable like oh this is the cup of christ you drink out of this you'll have immortality that one makes more the most sense um and then you know kingdom of the crystal Skull. i mean we, we know aliens that. But yeah, the dial is definitely a, go a goofy thing if the time traveling thing is true, but we'll see. I'm open to it. I'm open to it. I'm at my internship right now, which is why I look different, but also tonight I'm watching Indiana Jones, so I'm pretty hyped about that. I don't know, like reviews on Rotten Tomatoes have gotten better since it premiered at Cannes, and it got me thinking that this movie is actually, like, just something, you know, good about it. I mean, it has to. Like, James Van Gold is directing it. Harrison Ford has praised this movie to the, you know, end of the earth. But Disney premiering it at Cannes is such a bad, like, hindsight. In hindsight, it's, it was such a bad idea. I just finished my internship for today. And it just hit me that I'm going to go watch Indiana Jones. It, like, I don't know, like, this whole last week, it hasn't really been hitting me until right now because literally i go home i freshen up and then we go watch the movie man i'm excited now i'm really excited like it, it's really hitting me it's crazy to think that i've been such a fan of these movies every time i've watched those movies it's been at home i have the vhs tapes of the original three movies Plus an extra Young Indiana Jones series, which I, I only watched a couple times. I, I'm not a big fan of it, but that's besides the point. So my point is, this is going to be the first time I see a new Indiana Jones movie starring Harrison Ford in the movie theaters. That is just insane to me that that has never happened. It's a brand new Indiana Jones movie that I get to watch starring Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones at the movie theaters. And according to Disney, this will be the last Indiana Jones movie ever. All of that combined makes me like even more excited but also anxious for this film. Then 
and I watched it. But before we get into my opinion, let's hear from a fellow Indiana Jones fan and someone with a very familiar face. What's up? <laughs> that was perfect. All right, so we just watched a movie with Kurt. Yeah. You guys recognize him from many, many of my movies. So we just watched a movie. Kurt, what'd you think? I thought it was good. Um, I thought it was uh, exactly in the middle of the franchise. <laughs> okay. Which is, you know, Indiana Jones movies are good, so that's not a bad thing. Yeah, that's, that's true. It was um, pretty surprisingly self-contained, this movie. Self-contained meaning? Meaning it's it was like the others in the sense that it, it doesn't, it doesn't really call back to the other movies. Very oh, much. okay, okay, okay. Um, it's its own yeah. adventure, which is what Indiana Jones is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a a personal journey for Indiana Jones as a character. Yes. Which is um, not what we get Usually. in the other movies. Mm -hmm. um, it's about him as a character. And um, well, one of the highlights to me actually was the villain. Yes. And the villains. Yeah. They felt fitting for mm -hmm. the last movie. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting movie because it feels, again, it feels self-contained and it feels a little smaller, except for the beginning and end, <laughs> which are insane. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. The entire, like, most of it feels pretty small scale and personal, yeah. which is different than Crystal Skull. I think that was the intention. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. And I think that's a... a better route to go for his for his age for the yeah for his age and for the last movie yeah i um, i agree i agree there's a lot of a lot of practical stuff in the middle the beating yes. and are all cgi and yes it is insane yes yes but, it is um the the middle feels very indiana jones yes it is. <laughs> yes what you just saw is true I did go back to the theaters to watch it again, two more times in fact, because I just wanted to get my opinions right. There's a second viewing and a third viewing, and by the third viewing, that's when you really know how you feel about a movie, if it's good or bad. Sunday was the third time I watched this movie, this time in IMAX with a very special person. And then on the drive home, that's when I was really sitting and thinking about the film, really digesting what the filmmakers were trying to achieve when making this movie, Harrison Ford's final performance as Indiana Jones, and really letting it sizzle in my brain, coming up with my final thoughts away from what everyone else was thinking or saying about the film, my own thoughts and conclusions about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, coming from someone that has been inspired by these movies that literally started becoming a filmmaker after watching Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So this franchise really does mean a lot to me. And this is the final installment in that franchise. How do I feel about this movie? <sighs> Indiana Jones is always meant to be a series about action, fun, and heart. With that in mind, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny checks the boxes for me. It was a fun time to watch this. It had heart. It was fun. And there is a lot of good action. So let's, let, let me start with the positives here. The story for Indiana Jones, his character arc in this story is really, really good. You have to consider the fact that Indiana Jones is old. He is an old man now. He is living in 1969. The world has changed, has evolved. Seems like people like him don't belong in the current generation of 1969. And the whole de-aging and the opening sequence of him being de-aged, the whole point of that is to show how this is Indiana Jones in his prime. Here he is now in 1969. That is the whole point of having that opening sequence. Unlike the other Indiana Jones movies, this film really focuses on Indiana Jones as a character, what his mental state is, how he feels about the world now. It would actually be uncharacteristic of Jones if... 
he was the same person as he was in Crystal Skull or in Last Crusade. No, it's different now. So that is one of the biggest things I liked about this film is how they handled Indiana Jones and his character arc. And yeah, the ending is very satisfying. It's very, very satisfying. And of course, John Williams' score is always going to be amazing. He has, he never fails in that department. Uh, James Van Gold does a pretty good job of directing this movie. Listen, it's hard to match Steven Spielberg. It's always going to be hard to match him. So I, I, I believe Van Gold didn't even try to do that. He, he took it in his own way and I have to give him props for doing that. Harrison Ford performed very very well in this movie so did all of the characters in this film. Voller, the villain played by Mad Mickelson, wonderful wonderful performance. However I do feel like there should be a scene that really really shows off Mad Mickelson's acting. I would have preferred if there was a scene like that but how it is, I really, really love. And Helena, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. There has been a lot of controversy surrounding her and her character. And that is something I want to address right now. The negativity behind this film. Now, some of the negativity I, I do agree with. I believe that some of the narrative choices in this film is very, very questionable. If I was the one that was in the writing team or if I, if I wrote the script... I would not have gone for those narrative choices, but that for me personally didn't really affect my enjoyment of this movie. So I, I, I give that a pass, but I also do agree with some of the narrative choices being questionable. However, Helena is a good character. She is literally the female version of Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. In that movie, Indiana Jones only cares about fortune and glory. In this movie, Helena only cares about fortune and glory. I thought that was pretty obvious with her first scene with, with Indiana Jones. So for people to complain that she is the main character and Indiana Jones is a side character in his own movie, that is some BS right there. For people saying Helena saves Indiana Jones and all of this, all this nonsense, there is literally a scene in the movie where Indiana Jones saves her three times in one scene. One scene... Three times, he saves her. Helena being able to do everything on her own and she doesn't need Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's the point. That is part of Indiana Jones' character arc throughout the movie. And for those complaining that Indiana Jones is not the main character in his own movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark famously has the plot hole of Indiana Jones not affecting the plot of the movie. Like, if you take Indiana Jones out the main plot of Raiders would play out the exact same way. If you guys had no problem with Raiders being written like that, you guys should not have a problem with Dial of Destiny being written this way. Listen, the people that is calling Disney woke and calling it feminist and all that, that is, first of all, that's not the definition of feminism. You guys got to get that straight. And it's not woke if the if this serves the story and serves Indiana Jones' arc. You guys need to understand the intentions behind all of the narrative threads that they put in the movie. There's a reason for everything. So yeah, Helena is supposed to outsmart Indiana Jones because Indiana Jones's arc is about him feeling like he doesn't belong in 1969. That is the whole point of it. And that is multiplied by the fact that Voller, who is a Nazi, is working with the US and NASA. That trips Indiana Jones up completely. Every plot point, every narrative thread that they put in the script has an intention to it. Granted, like I said before, some of the narrative choices are questionable, especially near the end, which I will not talk about because I don't want to spoil the movie. And people are celebrating that this movie is bombing at the box office, thinking Kathleen Kennedy will be fired from it. To be honest with you, She's responsible for three Star Wars movies making tons of profit. So Disney's not going to fire her at all. Matter of fact, people that are lower in the ladder will get fired from it, will get laid off. That will be the reality of it. People that work the lower end jobs at Lucasfilm or Disney, they're the ones that will get fired because this movie is not making a profit. That is how corporations work. Higher executives, they will not get fired at all. That, it, it won't affect them at all. People are celebrating that this movie is a flop. You're basically celebrating people that are working the lower end jobs at Disney and Lucasfilm getting fired. And you guys are the ones that want jobs to grow. How? You know, if you're not supporting the system that provides jobs for people. 
Come on now. Anyway, it is a bummer that this movie is uh, bombing at the box office, but I mean, I, I understand why. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was a very, like, majority of the people don't like that movie. On top of that, going into this movie, a lot of people aren't really sold on the fact that an 80-year-old person is starring in an action movie. And on top of that, a majority of the people feel like Last Crusade is a very touching ending to the whole character. I mean, I understand that, but at the same time, Dial of Destiny really does serve a very, very good and emotional ending for Indiana Jones. And I feel like a lot of people should go out and watch the movie and form an opinion on their own. Like, for me personally, I liked the movie. I had a good time watching it. But I also understand some of the negative criticisms about the movie, besides the people that's hating on Phoebe Waller-Bridge and calling the movie woke. Coming from someone that has been very, very inspired by this franchise and that really loves these movies, I personally believe this film is necessary in the franchise and really does serve a fitting end to Indiana Jones. There was a lot of great action sequences in there, a lot of funny moments too, and the performances are really, really good. John Williams' score is amazing, of course. And yeah, I've, I've watched it three times now, and I'm excited to watch it again. Not in theaters, because I, I don't want to spend too much money in the theaters. We got Oppenheimer and Barbie coming out, you know, we got that double feature going, so I gotta save up for that. But in my opinion, in my opinion, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a very, very good movie. I had a good time watching it. Harrison Ford, thank you for bringing this character to life and giving us a lot of joy. I want to thank everyone that's involved with the entire franchise. You know, from Steven Spielberg to George Lucas to James Mangold to Kathleen Kennedy. Yes, to Frank Marshall to Robert Watts and everyone that's worked behind the scenes on these films. Thank you. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below if you've seen the movie or if you haven't seen the movie, if you liked it or if you disliked it. And uh, yeah, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss out on the release of our third feature-length film that's coming out this year, Tour. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.